Hi there, Sandy here with another jewelry video at my YouTube channel and my blog, KeepsakeCrafts.net. Today we'll be using leather cord and beads to make this rather trendy necklace with a leather cord tassel. So for a complete list of the supplies with all the dimensions, uh, you can check out the blog post down below in the description box or click on the link and that will just give you everything you need to make this necklace. So the first thing you need is some sort of focal bead, and I have here this large red stone. You'll need an assortment of beads to accent your focal bead, and here I have these rather irregular black stone beads, and then in between them I have these rhinestone rondelles. I like that they had lots of different colors, and I like the contrast between the sparkly and symmetrical and the rather irregular. And then you'll need some leather cord. So the first thing we're going to do is make our cord tassel. And I just have here some eighth inch black suede cord. You could use whatever you like. And you need something to wrap it around. Well, my phone happens to be the perfect size. You could just use a piece of cardboard and wrap it around however many times you like. And then trim off the excess. And you are going to need a little extra piece and then slide all of the loops off your form. And you're going to need a jump ring to hold that all together at the top and connect it to your necklace. And I have here a nice big 8 millimeter jump ring. So just get all your loops into the jump ring and close it up securely. Next you just need to prepare some glue. It's easier to do this before you start. E6000 is a nice choice here because it's strong as well as flexible. So I'm just going to take my extra piece of cord and wrap it nice and tight, about a half inch below that jump ring. And then trim it where you want it to end and add a jab of that glue. And then to hold that while we're doing the rest of our necklace, a bulldog clip perfect. And while that's holding it, you can also trim these bottom loops and then trim everything so it's nice and even. And when that's dry, you'll have your tassel. By the way, after rec finishing this recording and putting everything away, I decided I didn't like the look of that black strip of suede around here. The glue was just globby, I couldn't do it neat, so I took it off and instead cut another piece, about a 10 inch piece, with the same 26 gauge wire I used up here and wrapped this around. Also I bent in one end, you can kind of see it, and tucked it into the tassel to secure it so it won't catch on anything. And I like this a lot better. It ties the whole thing together better. So you can do it whichever way works better for you. Next we'll prepare our focal bead just by sliding it onto an eye pin. And then make a loop at the other end. You can use round nose pliers and wire cutters. I'm using the one step looper. Make sure that loop is nice and securely closed. Make sure they both are. And now we can start stringing our beads. So onto bead stringing wire, slide a crimp, and then a wire protector. Slide that wire back through the crimp, and then go ahead and flatten that crimp. You can use crimping pliers. I'm using the one-step crimper. Always test your crimp connections to make sure they're strong before you trim that excess wire. And then what I like to use crimp pliers for is to pick up a crimp cover. Because it's got those little round spots that hold it perfectly. Slide it over your flattened crimp, squeeze to close, and you have a nice neat finish. It just looks like there's a bead there. And now onto this wire you can slide one side of the beads for your necklace, whatever pattern you want. On the ends, I have these three six millimeter, just plain black beads. And then I'm alternating my chunky ones 
with my rhinestone roundels. And there are those all strung, kind of fun. Like I said, an interesting contrast between the very regular and the very irregular. The last bead before I get to the center of the necklace is just one more of those six millimeter black beads. And then I'm going to add a loop for my focal which is why you wanted to make sure that those are closed very securely. And then continue stringing the other half of your beads. So I'm back, and you'll notice that something is different here. And this is why I always say to make visual decisions visually. So this seemed like a good plan when I started, but once I got the beads strung, this side is strong the way I had originally planned. And you can see that because of the irregularity of the black beads, my rhinestone rondelles are just leaning back and forth and kind of at crazy awkward angles. And also they just look crowded. So what I decided to do instead was in between each of them, I put some of these beads. And these are just clear glass large beads. I think they're number six seed beads. And you often find them on your strands of beads as filler, as spacers in between the more expensive beads. So don't throw them out, you can save them and use them when you need to space out some of your beads. You can see just how this side looks a lot nicer, more graceful, more elegant, and not quite so crowded. So I'm going to restring these to match this side. Now I've finished my stringing, and as before, I've added a crimp, a wire protector, and the wire goes back through the crimp. And of course, be sure that when you tighten it, that you don't pull it all the way snug, because that just makes your stringing stiff. You don't have a nice, graceful strand of beads. Back it up a little. Give yourself at least an eighth of an inch for the bead strand to curve and move. And then go ahead and flatten that crimp, cut the extra wire, and put on a crimp cover as before. Now you can see I've finished the stringing, and I've also started adding my leather piece that's going to go around the back of the necklace, and I'll show you how I did that on this other side. You'll want to cut somewhere around a 10 inch piece of leather, whatever works for you, and just slip that through one of your large jump rings. Stick about an end out. It's easier to have a longer amount and then you can trim off the excess, but this gives you something to hold on to. And you're going to cut about a five or six inch piece of 26 gauge wire. And then about a quarter of an inch above the jump ring, just start wrapping. Now you can, if you want, do very nice, neat, tidy wraps. I'm gonna make mine a little bit messy. You just wrap them nice and tight. Give that a tug, your leather isn't going anywhere. Trim the excess wire and the excess cord. This is a fun and easy way to finish a kind of rustic look in a necklace. Just do make sure those wire ends aren't poking anybody. And then just attach that jump ring to that wire protector. Now you can finish the other ends the exact same way, but if you have them, you can also use cord ends like these. I have a video explaining how to use cord ends, but I'll show you here. You just put your leather piece in there, and the best tool to use for flattening these is flat nose pliers. You just grab one side, give that a squeeze, and then the other side, flatten that out. I know that's a nice, neat finish on your cord. On this side, I added a bit of chain, so on this side, I'll add my clasp. And then just one more step to finish, and that's to get our tassel that's been drying over here for a while. It's nice and dry now, and just open probably easier to open the loop that's at the bottom of your focal bead. Add the jump ring that's on the top of the tassel and then close that up securely. And your necklace is done. Here's another look at the necklace we made today. Tassels and leather are right on trend, so why not combine them? If you like this video, please be sure to give it a thumbs up and share. And if you have any other ideas for jewelry making videos, feel free to share them in the comments down below. There are two more videos up on the screen you can watch, and you can follow my creative endeavors on Facebook, Pinterest, Instagram, and on my blog.